Photoshop provides us with a number of tools that allow us to adjust the image itself, regardless of whether it's a photograph or a graphic design that we're creating. If we click Image and come down below where the adjustments layers were, you'll notice that we have Image Size, Canvas Size, Image Rotation, and Trim. I want to take a look here at Image Size because it's one that you're going to use quite a bit. You'll notice that right now our image is set to 5760 pixels by 3840. Let's say that let's switch this over to inches just so we have a slightly smaller set of numbers to work with. So right now our resolution is set to 72 and if we want to say increase or decrease our number, say we want to scale it to 50 inches, you'll notice that it automatically adjusts the height because our little chain here is clicked. If I unclick that, it'll adjust each of the width and height independently of the other. Okay, so if I go back to say 50 and choose OK, it will resize the image. You also notice that resample is checked and it has automatic, but they also give us a number of other options, preserving details, which is primarily enlargement, by cubic sharper, because when you take a large image and start to reduce it, it does make it a little bit blurrier. So we could either go with automatic and let the program sense which one makes the most sense, or we can choose one that we feel, based on experience, works best. If we don't want to resize the image, but just change the dimensions, watch what happens if I unclick resample. You'll notice that if I change the resolution from 72 to 300, it automatically reduces the size of the image. And why is that? Well, it's still the same number of pixels. You notice the dimensions at the top haven't changed. So all that you're doing is resetting what the resolution is. You're not affecting the size. If I choose resample and let's say we go with 72, okay, you'll notice now the pixels have changed 1382 by 922. So we're literally resizing the image under those settings. Now you might ask, why does that even matter? Well, it can matter in some pretty interesting ways because depending on the image that you're working with, it gives you a way of adjusting the resolution without needing to scale it up or lose anything. You can actually find out how much of your image resolution you have to work with if you're moving, say, from web to print. So like if you have an image that's, say, 1800 pixels, if you divide 1800 by 300, you're going to end up with 6. So at 300 dots per inch, print resolution, your image is going to be six inches wide. Okay, and like with this image here, let's just reset this for a moment. At 72 pixels, which is screen resolution, and we set this to images, this image is 80 inches wide, 80 inches. If we turn off resampling and change our resolution to 300, it's now 19.2 inches high. We haven't removed any pixels, it actually just makes it sharper, but the width and the height is different. And so that's where it comes into play. It really depends on what you're after. Now in some cases you may have an image that you want to scale up that's smaller than you prefer and you need to scale it up a little bit larger. And that's where it can make sense perhaps to use like bicubic smoother or preserve details depending on the type of image that you're working with. We also have canvas size. Now canvas size works different from image size. Canvas size starts with the current size of the image that you have and you'll notice you have the little arrows here. So let's say that I actually wanted to make this image taller or add additional canvas space to the image, say at the bottom. Okay, so I can change the height from 53 to say 70 and choose the anchor point to be top center. So what that tells the program is that the additional length that I'm adding should just be applied to the bottom. If I click 
the bottom center, it's saying that it should be applied to the top. And then as the program extends the canvas, I can actually choose how it does that. Do I want it to use the background color, the foreground color, white, black, gray, or other? Okay, so in this case, I'm probably going to choose black. So what happens when I click OK, it extends the canvas with the black color and then the original photograph is here so now it's it's higher than what it was before we applied the the canvas setting and I found very often just as a side note that if you're working with photographs especially and you want to extend the canvas it's usually not a bad idea to make a copy of your background image first and we'll just left mouse click and drag it down onto the create a layer a button here at the bottom and then whenever we apply canvas size let's just make it a little bit smaller it still has the same end result but you'll notice now the original photograph is preserved without any you know the color added in that same area we also have image rotation and this gives us the ability to rotate the image you know a full 180 degrees so just rotate it around 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise and arbitrary. Arbitrary is basically just entering in what angle you'd prefer, say 25. And uh, do you want it to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? Let's say clockwise. When I click OK, it rotates everything. Now, unlike transform, which we looked at earlier, transform just affects the layer okay the layer that you're applying the transform to the image rotation that we just applied affects everything and you'll notice that if I turn off the layer that we had created you'll notice that it actually rotated the entire canvas and everything okay and then it filled it in with white so you want to make sure to use that distinction depending on the end result that you're out to achieve another option that we have that isn't actually available to us unless we have a selection made is crop and what it will essentially do with the selection made if I choose crop it will crop to just that selection and you'll notice how it did that next we have trim and trim has some uh, uses to it that can come in handy uh, depending on the types of images that you're working with and other layers and let me give you an example let's copy this background so that we have an additional layer and I'm gonna make it a little smaller so it's easier to see this and then I'm gonna use transform to just scale up the layer and so you notice that let me just turn the background off here you'll notice that I can move this layer around because of how I scaled it. So let's say that I want it to just fit into this area. So by fitting it into this area, we have all this extra part of the image over here to the left. See, it's still there if I slide it over. But if I come up to image and true choose trim, what it will do is it gives us the option we can choose based on transparent pixels or the bottom left corner or whatever we can determine how it trims and essentially it's kind of like taking a pair of scissors and cutting off all the excess okay so the default is a top left pixel color and that's what we're going to use um, if I click OK watch what happens to the image now now when I move it notice that all that excess is gone Okay, so that's where it really comes in handy. In previous versions of Photoshop, I believe this was referred to as crop. Okay, but now it's called trim, and it's under this section here. Reveal all basically does the opposite. It actually, if we undo the trim, let me just undo that using history. If we come up to reveal all, you'll see that it resizes the image based on what was previously there. In other words, if I turn off the bottom layer and show the background, you'll see that it actually rescaled the entire image based on the larger size that I had scaled this layer up to. And then it just added the background color to make up the difference. Okay, so it's essentially the opposite of trim.